Imagine you get a knock on the door. There's a salesman. My daughter's interrupting, interrupting the filming. Imagine there's a salesman who knocks on your door and they basically say, I'm here to sell you some products. And then, I've been trying to film this video a few times now and I keep getting distracted by different things so I'm just going to carry on. So the salesman trying to sell you something and they clearly want you to buy this particular product and they say you know what this product is worth investing in. It's a great fantastic product and if you buy this much you'll be able to make this much profit and so on and so forth. So you don't know what the product is. They've just given you some vague idea about how much money you can make and whatnot. So then you ask them okay can you give me some evidence that this product is good? And what you decide to do, uh, what he decides to do is they open up their briefcase and they set up a PowerPoint presentation and they start going over these slides. Now these are very uh, detailed pieces of information about how successful you would be if you invest in this product. But the weird thing is they're not actually about the product. They're just about the economy. They're just about, look, the economy is fantastic. The economy is great. The economy at the moment is, is rising. Our GDP is way better than our neighbors. We have a lot of foreign investment coming in. There's a lot of chances for young people. Yes, darling. There's a lot of, there's a lot of investment uh, uh, for the youth and you know, crime is going down. And they're just talking about how fantastic the economy is, but they're not showing you the product or what the product can actually do. That's all very vague. So, as a normal person would, you would say, that doesn't make any sense to me. How, how are you trying to sell me this product and tell me this product is good by just talking about how great the economy is? Isn't that a distraction? Isn't that basically uh, a red herring? And they get really offended. They're like, you need to follow the evidence. You need to listen to what I'm saying. You need to stop being irrational. You need to accept this product is good for you. And you'd be sitting there thinking, are you feeling all right, mate? Um, you came into my house, you're trying to sell me a product. You've given me almost no information about what this product does. You, you, you're just talking about how great the economy is. So you have this argument going back and forth and eventually, yes, darling. So what you basically do is that you kick him out of your house. You say, get out, right? This is ridiculous. You need to get out of my house. You're, you're just wasting my time here. Now, that sort of experience you won't forget. You'll actually always remember that. You'll always talk to your friends about it and say, how irrational and stupid and, and, and dumb is it that you accuse someone of being stupid when they're trying to sell you an idea, but you don't actually sell the idea. You just sell a red herring. You sell something which is in the background. Now, of course, the economy plays a role in the product, but the product is the main thing. That's what you really, if you want to sell it, you have to explain how that product actually works. Now, this analogy, it fits perfectly with what happens when theists debate atheists when it comes to Darwinism. Now, Darwinism is the idea of natural selection being the primary force behind biological change. So we have novel biochemical systems. We have these amazing supposed, well, they say design uh, if, uh, that was designed by natural selections. We have all these amazing things around us. So how did they come around? They basically see natural selection. Now, when you actually watch a documentary, when you actually uh, watch a debate between an atheist and a theist, and you, you, you watch just um, how, how these sort of conversations are going, you basically start to realize something very odd. Darwinists don't actually sell you the product. They just talk about something different, how great the economy is. They just talk about um, similarities in nature, which, to be honest, were known before Darwin. Carl Linnaeus, he put forth the Linnaean system, which we still use today, and he existed way before Darwin. So we knew similarities existed. We knew that there were similarities due to common descent. We know that there's similarities which cannot be due to common descent, which is homoplasy. So homology and homoplasy, we know and understand. However, both of these things, homology and homoplasy, they don't go an inch forward in terms of explaining the creative power of natural selection. So if Darwinists want us to accept Darwinian evolution, they need to provide evidence for natural selection, for its creative power. And that's why it's very important that when we're having these conversations with Darwinists, we don't accept the red herring. We don't accept the straw man. We 
will accept evidence for Darwinian evolution being, by the way, a valid scientific model. It doesn't mean we believe it to be true literally, because as mentioned in previous videos, science cannot give you that truth with a capital T. But putting that aside, even if we're to accept it as a very strong theory, you guys need to provide evidence for natural selection, not just evidence for, hey, look, this is similar to that. Hey, look, that is similar to that. If that's the case, then I don't know, we might as well just go watch paint dry. This is a really boring conversation. I mean, I've had many discussions with atheists, formally and informally, and when they're defending uh, Darwinian evolution, and I'm not making a straw man of them, you can actually watch the videos on this channel and other channels, they don't defend natural selection. They just speak about similarities, homology. That's not what you're supposed to be doing. Charles Darwin's main idea was natural selection being the primary force and in that toolkit of Darwinism that you need to, uh, that package that you need to sell us, all you really have is natural selection working on random mutations. You don't have, uh, you, you don't have the, the, the liability to, uh, no, to, sorry, the luxury to simply say, hey look, things are similar, therefore Darwin's fine. No, you actually need to provide evidence for that particular product. And if you don't do that, just like the businessman is gonna be thrown out of the house, you guys are not gonna be taken seriously until you get to grips with what the question actually is. The questions about natural selection and random mutation being able to create the massive evolutionary changes from the small cell-like creatures that we had billions of years ago to elephants and giraffes and Lady Gaga. That's what you guys need to explain, not simply explain the similarities.